Hi, I'm Evie Kirkwood from St. Joseph County Parks. Join me as we experience nature together. Outdoor Elements is presented in partnership with the St. Joseph County Parks Department, regional parks with natural fun, St. Patrick's County Park, Ferretti Bago Creek County Park, Bendix Woods County Park, and the Spicer Lake Nature Preserve. Artists have always been drawn to nature for subjects and materials. Today's Outdoor Elements is the nature of art. We'll visit a college sculpture class learning to craft animals from wire. We'll stop in at a Boy Scout camp to help scouts transform a storage building into a work of art. But up first, plant materials have been used for centuries to brighten our world. We'll visit a living history village to learn how they were used to color clothing in natural dyes. We're at the gathering of five medals here in Elkhart County outside of New Paris, Indiana. And there are a myriad of reenactors giving demonstrations on artillery, which you just heard, and native seeds and all kinds of things. We're going to learn a little bit about natural dyes. And we're with Cheryl Daniel, and you are a natural dye specialist, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a great encampment here, and Thank Bill, you. of course, is here, who's actually yes. kind of helping to demonstrate the process. Absolutely. Couldn't do it without Let's talk a little bit about the types of fabrics in the time period that you're portraying. What, what was available to folks? Available to folks was silk, mm -hmm. wool, linen, hemp cloth. Uh -huh. and cotton, although cotton was very expensive because the cotton gin hadn't been invented. Right. So all the cotton had to go to Europe to be combed and woven and then shipped back over here. So okay. cotton was much more expensive than silk or anything else. All right, so a little different than today. Where a cotton little different is than today. Ex expensive, right. So if you were dyeing different fabrics and you have all these natural dyes, did they take colors differently? They absolutely did. Okay. The plant fibers are cellulose, whereas wool, leather, mm -hmm. feathers are uh, protein based okay. and so they, they do take the dye differently. Right. Um, protein based, like the wools like, like um, alkaline based dyes better whereas the plant fibers like the acid based Interesting. So it's kind of a com it sounds like to me it's a combination of art and science. It is. It, it is, absolutely right? is. It okay. absolutely is. Well, before we actually kind of look at the dye pots, can we take a look at some of these plant materials? I'd be happy to show okay. you. Okay. First of all, I'm going to show you this. This is alum. Alum actually has aluminum in it. They mm -hmm. used, this is a mordant. Uh, mm -hmm. They used mordants to open up the fabric so the fabric could actually accept the dye. Okay. If you just put it on top, it's called a stain. If you right. open it up so it can accept the dye, it's called dyeing. Okay. So right. then some of the dyes. The mm -hmm. first one here is blue. Yeah. This was indigo, and indigo came from India, actually. It's a plant leaf uh -huh. that is grown and then um, fermented, huh. and it makes this blue color. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful color. It, yeah. it beautiful does color. make a very pretty color. Okay. Uh, Bloodroot is another one. Which is this leaf uh, here. That is mm -hmm. a native plant. The root is what's harvested mm -hmm. to make this red, hence the name bloodroot. Blood okay. Uh, this plant here is just goldenrod. Sure. Yeah. And the shirt that I have on, this color is was dyed in goldenrod. Okay. Um, Beautiful kind of yellow green mm -hmm. color. And as you can see, uh, there, where it folds and where it's um, Time on open your shoulders to the sun. The sun. Mm -hmm. These colors are not color fast. Natural plant colors are not color fast, mm -hmm. and they're very sun sensitive, so they do fade out in the sun and where the wear is on them. The good thing is that then you can just just put it back in another put dye it back pot. In, right? Exactly. You can maybe exactly. change the color, right? Yes. If you wanted to. Yes. Okay. Uh, and of course, this is something that people um, would be collecting now: black mm -hmm. walnuts. Black walnuts. Uh, black walnuts. Uh, 
dye to brown. My leggings were dyed in black walnuts. Okay. Uh, and those leaves are staghorn sumac. So this is just the leaves collected. That's just the leaves. Okay. Yeah. You can get the color from the sumac either from the leaves, the branches, or the berries. Or the berries. Or the berries. Any of it. So. Um, um, and that makes um, generally a gray or a purple color. And this is kind of what Bill has been yeah. working on Bill. here in this pot. Maybe we can get Bill to kind of fish this out here in just a second. So um, this, did this have leaves? That has just the leaves in it. Yeah. So we've got the, that kind of lavender. Yeah, it's purple. a beautiful color. Did it His, start out white like it this? It started out white. Mm -hmm. And so that now was, it's... Right. We just put the... The leaves into one of those into a white bag, and then they came out purple. This was dyed in sumac, wow. and his shirt was also dyed in sumac. Nice. Oops. So let me ask you this, Cheryl. I noticed that this I'm pot that Bill's way. working on here in the sumac is iron. Yes. This one is. Is that copper? copper? Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make a difference? It does make a difference. Usually, the copper will brighten fabrics, the mm, colors, okay. whereas the iron will, what they say, sadden it or take it down a notch. Okay. It won't be as bright as eye popping. It'll be more uh, subtle. A subtle color. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, you know, these are all collected at different times of the year. Mm -hmm. um, although I imagine something like this, oh, this is a block of Osage, Osage orange, orange wood. You can get anytime. just about any time. Mm -hmm. And that's what's in this dye yes. pot, right? Yes. Okay. And that's what makes this beautiful golden color. Wow. You can and see the gorgeous. difference between the yellow or the golden, golden rod, rod and the Osage, Osage orange. orange. Okay. And then we took a piece of fabric that we had dyed in cochineal, which we can show you in a minute. Okay. Uh, it makes a red color, mm -hmm. reddish color. And of course, if you put red and yellow, yellow. or gold together, you get this beautiful burnt orange color. Yes. That is stunning. Yes. Okay. So we can take a look here over at the okay. laundry line Great. real quick as we're wrapping up to kind of look at some of the colors here. They're just gorgeous. They're really pretty colors. Okay. Is this goldenrod? That's Osage orange, this actually. This is Osage orange. Uh -huh. okay. And, okay. And this is, that is wool from my sheep Huey. Yeah. Nice. This is Osage orange on linen. Okay. Um, this, what do I have on there? Hemp. Hemp cloth with, with Osage a... orange. So you can see, like, there's a huge variation. There's also a huge variation year to year. Ah. Because if it's a really hmm. wet year, there's not as much dye stuff that's in the plant. It's not as concentrated. concentrated. So we get a whole range of colors. So even though we're dyeing with Osage orange or sumac, it's kind of a fun, fun experiment right. to see what exactly. color will come exactly. out. Okay. This is Queen Anne's lace. Oh, the flower or the root? The flower. The flower. The plant. Okay. All right. The, the flower and plant. the plant. Yeah. And these two cloths were done in cochineal. Cochineal is a Bug insect insect yeah. carapace right that is that grows in cacti uh -huh. in uh, what is now like New Mexico mm -hmm. Arizona right and they would have collected those down there moved them to the Mississippi taken them up the Mississippi and traded them here for things we had here yeah. it was a commodity trading it was not a money trade uh huh and it was a very popular popular color because right. it wasn't something probably that was easy to get with plant no, materials no, here, right? No, yeah. it, it, it's harder yeah. to yeah. get a red from here. And is there any color that you can't get? You cannot get black. Like a true black. Like a true black you cannot get. Yep, yep. Okay. You can, so you can get, get very dark uh, like a grays, gray. mm -hmm. but to get a black it's almost impossible. Yeah, okay. Here you, is a demonstration of how... Not color fast. Not color right. fast. Sure. This is where it had hung over a line. Yeah. Sure. In right. the sun, and yeah. in just one day's time, it faded out Fades that much. Out. Yeah. Well, this is really interesting, Cheryl. I appreciate you kind of preserving this Thank art you. form and sharing it. I know there's many children that are coming <laughs> through today, and over the course of the weekend, you'll talk to many visitors. But yes. thanks so much for taking the time to talk to us here well, on Outdoor Elements. You. It's been my pleasure. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Up next, bending and twisting wire to create the image of an animal is a project for these University of Notre Dame students. We'll stop in on campus to see how they create animal wire sculptures. Here are some photos of rime ice taken by Craig Kirkwood along a marsh in Cass County, Michigan in February. Rime is a coating of white ice particles created when water droplets freeze on a surface of an object. When fog occurs in freezing conditions, it often creates rime, covering plants and shrubs with a frosty coat. 
Thanks for sharing your pictures, Craig. If you have some pictures you'd like to share, we'd love to see them. Just go to the Outdoor Elements website.